Hyperinflation is a total destruction of the currency. It's not an economic, it's not an economic uh, affair. It's, it's a flight from the currency, and it can literally happen overnight, like within a matter of weeks. And all it takes is for one country and then another and another to begin to decide they don't want to hold U.S. dollars anymore, and they begin to dump their dollars by the billions and the billions. And before you know it, everybody in the world, and then finally the Americans, they begin to flee from their own currency, and you have a hyperinflation, and it literally can happen in a matter of weeks. We would assume uh, that we have inflation, even superinflation, immediately in front of us. Inflation can be measured in degrees. First, second, and third degrees. You have inflation, superinflation, and last of all, and most devastatingly, hyperinflation. So the expansion of the monetary base has been extreme. Unprecedented if you go back to 1970, 1980, this is very abnormal behavior, but understandable. They're trying to fill a gap. The consumer steps away, government deficit spending steps in to take the consumer's place. You might ask, what happened? What, what happened up here? Things are moving along kind of nicely. Is it often that you see a chart like this? It should beg the question, what happened? And again, this is where the issue of velocity comes in. You create this much liquidity and you think you've got the problem well in hand. You can always reduce by that much as well, assuming that the Fed is willing to reduce the liquidity that they've created and draw it back in. But what if it actually gets into the economy and begins to recycle itself? And instead of a $3 trillion boost to the economy, you end up with a $30 trillion boost to the economy. We inflate here, and we see monetary inflation and price inflation other places in the world. If you're in North Africa, if you're in the Middle East, if your income is less than $5 a day, and eggs have just doubled, or wheat is up 30% in two months, do you know, do you know what you face? You, you, you face the problem of being able to feed your family. So we create inflation here, and it's a domestic issue, except that because we have the world's reserve currency, we do have a footprint that's larger than a domestic footprint. Our monetary policy impacts the world. We create inflation and export it. So we have an expansion of the monetary base. We have a collapse in the M1 money multiplier or velocity, different but similar. As you can see, it's a collapse in, in the money multiplier. And you end up with superinflation should the Fed not take back that liquidity fast enough. We've chosen to support certain regimes around the world. Those regimes are now crumbling. Why? Actually, because of our monetary policy. Captured by anti-Mubarak protesters, he confesses he was paid 50 Egyptian pounds. The anti-Mubarak protesters demand Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak resign. The wealth created in the last half century has been artificial in nature. If you look at the activities of the world's central banks, we've seen a 12-fold increase in aggregate monetary bases worldwide. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. This is very similar to past bank bailouts. Uh, we even saw this in China in the, in the, in the early 90s. Uh, a bank collapsed in China and it was households who paid the price for it. It wasn't the banks who mislint. It, it wasn't the financial institutions who were too aggressive in their lending policies and practices. It was households that paid the price. Instead of you receiving compensation for putting deposits with the bank, they're essentially keeping the compensation themselves. And the depositor is shortchanged, squeezed out of the income picture. Back to the point, banks don't have to lend. They don't have to lend to you. They don't have to lend to small businesses. Because in a zero interest rate environment, a low interest rate environment, the benefit goes directly to them, and you take the risk. The SGS estimates of inflation are somewhere between 7 and 8 percent. The official inflation rate is supposed to be 2 to 2.5 2 percent. According to the cost of living adjustment, for the last two years, there's been no inflation. <laughs> so, so apparently we're supposed to accept that there is no inflation. E meanwhile, you, you, you go to uh, the store, you're faced with it. You pay college tuition, you're faced with it. You go to the gas pump, you're faced with it.
best for all of us is best for each one of us. We cannot afford a business as usual attitude anywhere because fighting inflation is everybody's business. The things that we need for living are all increasing in price. This is inflation. You create too much money and that money reprices everything in the marketplace. It's not that corn is more expensive, it's that your dollar is worth less, it's that your pound is worth less, it's that your euro is worth less, and it takes more of that same unit of account to buy the same goods and services. You look at politicians the world over, including Washington, D.C., and what do you have? Corruption, endemic, it's everywhere. But what you have in the Middle East is a response, a response that says inflation is something that we cannot deal with. We are tired, ma'am. We are tired. Stop the price hikes. We are suffering. We are Egyptians. We love Egypt. But stop this. We want to eat. We want to live. We and our children.